Hi, I'm Indiana Jones and welcome to my channel, Crafting with Indiana Jones. Today I'm celebrating Mother's Day and for me, it's a blessing because I am blessed to be a mother and also because I was blessed to have an incredible woman as my mom. She passed away last July and this is my first Mother's Day without her, but in a way, I know I'm still celebrating with her because everything I am is because of who she was and in my heart still is. So join me as I celebrate Mother's Day with all of you and perhaps give you some inspiration and ideas of how to celebrate Mother's Day with your moms or with the memory of your moms. So let's get started. I'm going to revamp this hat box with this palm motif, which I never really liked, using this mist tint paint from Home Depot. As you know, I love to use mist tint paint because it's very economical, and this is a beautiful creamy yellow color that is just so vintagey and nostalgic. So you see, recently my brother came across some of my mom's old sewing patterns, and I thought, what a wonderful idea to incorporate that into my decor. I was also inspired by Sherry of Canterbury Cottage. She was so sweet to reach out to me recently and congratulate me on my latest video. So I, I please check out Sherry and her channel as well. She has wonderful thrift flip ideas. Anyway, she created a lampshade using old patterns, old sewing patterns, and I thought I would do the same to this hat box. Just interposing some of the old patterns themselves with some of the outside pictures of these patterns. I have to tell you, as I was going through these old patterns, I remembered how my mom would spend the weekends sewing and how she and my grandmother taught me how to sew at a very early age. Now, I do sew on occasion. When I have time, I do use my sewing skills to create my costumes, which she was always surprised at how I would just create patterns out of the blue. She loved to teach me how to use patterns correctly, and it is an art form if you ask me. Now, here are these patterns, and I swear this was the funniest thing because this was a pattern for Dickies. Yes, remember in the 70s, Dickies? I remember my mom would create them so that she would have coordinating accessories for her vests and her jackets and her dresses, and she would just give them a different updo just by wearing different Dickies. I, they are just hilarious to, to find this pattern. So here I'm using the patterns, I'm cutting them up, and I'm going to be pasting them all over the hat box. Now, I know the yellowing color, it you know, it's deeper than some of the you know more recent patterns, but that's what gives it that aged beautiful look, is that aged patina as the you know pages just age and wither. Just as you would use old books, it's a great way to decorate using old sewing patterns. And especially if you're going to house your own sewing patterns, of which I have many myself. So here I'm just attaching them to the hat box with some Mod Podge. You know that Mod Podge is my favorite and my go-to tool for any kind of decoupaging uh, project. Here I'm using that little brayer that is also from the Plaid family of products and adding a few little pieces of scrapbook paper of colors and designs that I know that my mom would enjoy. She loved flowery, happy patterns. And here I am just adding the patterns to the side of the uh, hat box. And I'll also be adding some patterns that I cut out from uh, or that I found online. And they're just vintage patterns that you can look up and cut out and use for your own designs. This looks very similar to the designs of sewing decor that I've seen at Hobby Lobby and at Joann's Fabrics, which are much, much pricier. So I hope you try to make some of your own sewing storage accessories with these ideas. And again, what a lovely way to remember the beautiful work my mom did as she sewed all of her clothes and mine as well.
This is a special collaboration that I am hosting to remember our moms with all our love and devotion. And I have so many wonderful crafting YouTube friends that I always love to share their wonderful ideas with all of you. So please make sure to check out the full playlist and perhaps you're inspired to create something for mom this weekend. I became very nostalgic when I opened this box that my brother brought me. It was my mom's button box. You know, your grandmother or your mom, everyone has a button box. As you can see, she has them all nicely organized. And I remember as a child, my grandmother and my mom would put me to organize buttons to keep me quiet and keep me entertained. So I decided to take all the silver buttons that I can find, and these are silver metal buttons and those are really hard to find these days and they're pretty pricey so i decided to take them all and create some jewelry from them i thought this was a perfect idea here i am using a jump ring and i'm just opening the jump ring to link to this link <laughs> chain that i had um it was a remnant i have a whole bunch of jewelry um fixtures as well so i just I decided to add these buttons to this bracelet and I recall that back in the day I don't know if it was in the 60s or the 70s I remember button bracelets and I remember bracelets being made you know with thread and the plastic buttons or the wooden buttons but I don't recall my mom having a silver metal uh, button bracelet so I decided to make myself a charm bracelet with all of these silver metal buttons and they were three different sizes three different styles and all I'm doing again is opening the jump ring adding the button to the chain and repeating the whole process again I, what I did was I tried to make sure that I measured through with the first buttons uh, three links in between and then in between those three links I added the other buttons so it was three different styles all together um, and I really think it came out so nice much nicer than I expected it's just very tedious so it's a good idea to watch something on TV I have to tell you my mom used to love watching anything having to do with mystery and a mystery murder mysteries she loved those crime mysteries and all that stuff and um you know biographical stories as well and and there you have it the full button bracelet but i was watching poirot from britbox while i was creating this and i was really enjoying myself and all the memories i have of my mom and this is going to be a really nice memory as i think it's a throwback to the 60s and the 50s when people would really wear a lot of charm bracelets. So I think this is just a perfect addition to anyone to create a gift for your mom or for a special friend who's like a mother to you. Or in my case, a gift for myself as this is a sweet reminder of my mom and all the work she did for all of her sewing and also how much she loved to wear jewelry herself she would love this bracelet and i would love hearing the jingle jangle and just thinking of her I decided to create a small shadow box, a memory box, not only with my mom, but with my grandmother. She was such an influence on me as well, and she was quite the hoot of a lady. 
I adored my grandmother, even to the point where my mom would get jealous of how much I would hang out with my grandmother. And when I was little, I would say, I'm going to run away and buy a cottage in a forest and just live there happily with my grandmother. <laughs> my mom would laugh and she goes, oh yeah, right. <laughs> but in the end, we all just loved each other so much. My grandmother always lived with us or close by. So it, it was nice also that my mom was always around for my sons as they grew up and they really had such a close relationship with their grandmother as well with my mom and i i couldn't be happier that they still recall how much she would call them every day and talk to them or even text them as they got older and let them know how much she loved them by saying te quiero mucho and even to this day i send text to my ethan who's up in boca and I let him know every, each and every night and every morning how much I love him and how I pray for him. And I always say on behalf of his grandmother, te quiero mucho. My mom was an inimitable force of nature in our family. And um, she will never be forgotten. I can tell you that. Um, so let me tell you what I'm doing here. I took this plastic little um, frame that I had from the Dollar Tree. As you saw, it was black. I painted it this very faded green color to match that little box that I had. I had actually given my mom this box and it was filled with little perfumes that she always loved to have in her purse. She always loved to smell like flowers everywhere we went. So now I have those little perfumes. And I decided this box is so lovely that I needed to create this into a shadow box for my mom and my grandmother. Here I'm using some trim that I found in that beautiful button box and using that as a frame. I was going to try to create a frame uh, with some of the molds that I had, but I just loved the simplicity of this beautiful little, it's such a perfectly shabby chic um, trim that I decided to use that as a frame. And that is my beautiful mother actually that is the picture with which my father fell in love with my mother even before he had met her in person. He always saw this picture as he was best friends with her brother and he was in awe at how beautiful she was. And do you blame him? She looks like a movie star. And um, I was always so, so enamored with that beautiful story of how my dad fell in love with my mom and that is a picture of my grandmother back in the 20s and um she was also quite a beauty herself so i have to say i was very blessed with lots of beauty in my family as far as the women folk were concerned and there you have it i created both frames for both my mom and my grandmother I do really miss them both so very much and I understand how my mom missed my grandmother so much when uh, she left us when she was 89. Um, she unfortunately ne didn't get to meet her great grandsons Ethan and Luke but she always dreamt of beautiful little boys for some reason um, with me. She knew that I was going to be a, a boy mama and she was right. and my mom just spoiled my boys and my niece Bianca she loved them so if she loved her children myself Manny and Carlos my mom tripled that amount of love with grandchildren and you know you know how that is you ladies out there who are grandmas so here I'm taking some of those vintage you know spools thread spools and I covered it in ribbon instead of thread and again I did little cutouts of like simplicity patterns from the 50s because my mom used to love clothes from the 50s and all those kind of movies she loved war movies and detective movies and she wasn't into like romances she was a very funny lady in that way she really really enjoyed you know um biographies and and things and she was just awesome. I, I really miss her so much. She was just so lively. It's still hard to believe that she's not here. Now I'm adding some buttons and some uh, jewelry finding, some vintage jewelries that I found that were broken or busted. And I'm just adding this all to uh, this beautiful little shadow box. And again, you can create a shadow box with the items that you find around the house. 
for your mom if she's no longer with us or if she's still with us get some of this stuff and and create this beautiful little keepsake um for her so you can she can see how much you appreciate her in your life as this is this will be in my bedroom and i just think it's a perfectly shabby chic memorial to my mother and my grandmother who i love so much If your mom or grandmother was anything like mine, you know that cookie tins, empty cookie tins, was a staple. Whether it was those butter cookies, remember those butter cookies, or these coffee sticks, these coffee stick cookies that you get at the Dollar Tree. There was always an abundance of coffee, t of coffee tins or cookie tins, which never had cookies, but everything else in the world that you could possibly put in these cookie tins. So I decided to upgrade this cookie tins again with that beautiful creamy yellow color. I really love this color. I'm actually thinking of painting one of the rooms in this bright, happy, creamy yellow color. And again, this color is very nostalgic. I think it brings back that time period in the 70s for some reason. I don't know. It, it, it does that for me. So here I am just painting this cookie tin. And again, I used two coats as I did with the box, with the hat box. And I don't know if I had mentioned that before. And this paint is very good. It's not chalk paint, but it holds really well to the cookie tin, as you can see. And I'm trying not to get paint all over my nails because you guys always notice my nails, but to tell you the honest truth, my nails are always painted, not in the color that they're painted, they're just colored in paint from all the crafts that I do. Now I'm decoupaging, once again, just pieces of patterns that I had, you know, from my mom. These vintage patterns are all aged and um they're just beautifully aged i love that rng deep yellowish brown color that the tissue paper gets after a while so i'm using that as a base and then i once again i printed out all of those beautiful um pattern covers but i made them smaller so they can fit on the can right here i'm using it as the cover the top and again you can use this to stash anything any of your supplies uh, it could be different spools of thread whatever it is that you'd like to uh, stash away you can put them away in these beautiful little cookie tins or coffee tins whatever kind of tins that you have even those peanuts peanut tins believe it or not now they're not tins i know they're made out of cardboard but still it, it serves the same purpose so again i'm using these beautiful and you can just look them up beautiful uh vintage patterns from butterwick and butterwick 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 <laughs> i can't say it and simplicity and mccall's uh vogue sometimes i i think i have a few patterns that are from vogue but i just love the vintage style of the 50s and the 60s and it's so in style as you've i've said mentioned before you can find it at hobby lobby and at Joanne's Fabric, but here you can make it yourself. And I'm telling you that my mom would have been tickled pink to have seen these crafts. I think she really would have loved this idea. And again, I have to thank Sherry because she also inspired me to use the patterns from um, all these sewing patterns that were just laid around those tissues papers. So this is another wonderful idea to create some gifts and they can be coordinated gifts for your mom your aunt your best friend anyone who loves to sew would love to have this in their sewing room i think it's just darling and i hope you try it for yourself I created this hanging wall decor and I actually designed that whole kind of look, that dress um, dress form look with the aging on the edges and all that stuff in another video that I did live. So I'm going to link that video here so you can see how I used a Dollar Tree wall decor item and created this beautiful sewing inspired item with the dress form. 
Now I'm taking all of those patterns and I'm cutting them into one inch strips. I'll also have this design available for you in a link below in my description. So I'm taking the pattern paper, this tissue paper, and I'm actually going to ruffle it as the dress is ruffled in this painting or drawing. And I just decided this would be such a cute way to bring this wall design to life and give it more dimension. And yes, I'm covering up that pretty pink color, but I think this vintagey yellowed tissue paper adds so much more depth and it makes it just so adorable because it is in 3D. So all I'm doing is taking that one inch width paper, and it's probably like 12 inches long, and I'm just crimping it up to create the pleats or the folds. So you know how I say, pleat and repeat, pleat and repeat. And that's basically what I'm doing here. Using my nails, sometimes burning myself, but you know, you know how that goes with a hot glue gun. You know, everything for art, everything for beauty and art. But you can also use a stick or paintbrush or a pencil so you don't burn your fingers the way I was doing it. But I'm used to it, I didn't mind. And most of the glue ended up on my nails anyway. So here I am just finishing that first ruffle. And again, I would suggest that you start from the bottom ruffle and go up so that you don't see where the ruffling actually takes place. So it's disguised under the consecutive ruffles that are to continue. So here I'm just continuing the next ruffle up. And you'll notice that I skip the roses because I have something special in mind for that part. I'm finishing the, the second to last of the dress ruffles and here I am finishing the very top dress ruffle and now I'm going to focus on those roses. So I'm actually creating little rosettes from that pattern tissue paper. It's pretty easy to do. All you do is roll up the tissue paper and make it look like a rosette. For me, it's easy. It's just spiraling around and around and around until you create a rose pattern. Here I am trying to show it to you a little closer where I'm just crimping it at the bottom and just trying to create the roses like a rosebud with this tissue paper. I don't know if you can see it there, but that's what I'm going to add to the dress. And it just adds so much more dimension and even though I'm covering up those beautiful pink shabby chic colors I just think adding this added dimension and texture adds so much more character to this little dress form I love it I hope you do too and I hope you try this out and again you don't have to use this you know this format where I'm using the old dress patterns you can use actual tissue paper of the colors of the actual design so it's a little brighter and happier but this is such a lovely decor piece for a sewing room or for a little girl's room or for your mom's room maybe the bathroom it's just so cute and again i'm adding more embellishments by adding a little bit of satin ribbon and a beautiful little flower and there you have it
I can't thank you enough for coming with me today and sharing my memories of mom with all of you. As you can see, my creativity comes from my mom and my grandmother, and I'm so glad that I could share a little bit of, of that and keep a little bit of those memories with me in my home decor. I hope this inspires you to make something similar, to just remember the beauty and the strength that your mom brought to your life. Thanks to all of you also for helping me to achieve 10,000 subscribers. I couldn't have done it without you. And to my wonderful playlist collaborators, thank you so much for joining me on this journey to celebrate moms. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. And from my mom to all of you, te quiero mucho. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Pero sepa que I always love you. Y te quiero, te quiero mucho. Love you, mommy. Thank you once again for spending this time with me. And I wish you all a very blessed and happy Mother's Day. I also hope you come back for more. And to stay in touch, please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that bell so that you're notified of my latest creations. I'll see you again very soon.